Welcome Flip Clock fans, you're looking at a Panasonic LTD Flip Clock Radio. And yes, it is huge. We've got a Copal Model 227 here for comparison. Now the clock mechanism itself is about the same size, but the whole unit's huge. So if you look here at this Panasonic RC6025, that might be on somebody's nightstand table. You see the Panasonic LTD here towers over that. Now I've had this for a while, but I just finally got around to working on it. It's been really a pain for me. The main focus here is going to be on how to take it apart. You see, when I got this, it was a wreck. Unfortunately, I lost all those pictures and all the video to show you what it was like before. And I was trying to rescue it. Eventually I did. But let's take a closer look. The Panasonic model RE8345. Now the clock started showing up in newspaper advertisements right at 1975 and we see that the Panasonic LTD series was basically the high end of their electronic stuff. You see here it, it was priced at $99.95 which is just over $500 in today's dollars. So this was a pricey unit in the day. And we're going to, like I said, we're going to focus on getting this apart. And to do that, I had to make a special tool, and you're going to need something like this if you're going to work on your clock. And what it is, is a socket that I have cut down the walls to. Now you can buy sockets like this. This is a 7 16 or you can use a 16 millimeter. You can buy cut down or thin walled sockets, but I didn't have one, and plus I can't guarantee that they would work. This one, I guarantee will work. So to take it apart, just like all flip clock radios almost, you just got to get the knobs off and most you pull away. That's for the alarm, that's for the flip clock. Then we take these things off here. It's a brushed aluminum knobs. They're actually caps over top of knobs. Nice looking knobs. Again, these were really filthy when I started. This one here, I had pulled this one off before. Let's see if I can get it off. Whoa. It didn't want to come off, but you see it was glued. Probably just stick it back on there. You know, it's not going to come off. So the first thing we got to do is to get the back off here. Now the cabinet is, is wood, so the top screws here are, are wood screws. So we got the four screws to take off here to get this back off. And you take a look here, it looks like an old style radio or, or phonograph back here. You almost expect to see tubes with all this. There's a lot of, a lot of room here. I would imagine that makes the speakers sound good, having that space there. So I'm going to show you how to take this apart. First, we want to start at the bottom to get the Get the thing going. Now you take these two feet off, the other two feet on the front, you do not need to take off. It would just be wasting your time. We're still not ready yet. It won't budge. So there's some screws that we got to get off the front face. Now the front face itself comes off by these five screws here, two in the corners and one at the top. But you've got to disconnect this mess from the front piece. And to do that, there's four screws. There's this one here. And it's, uh, it's got a large, enlarged flat head there. That's the top screws. And there'll be another one on the other side comparable to that. Again, I'm telling you that because I lost my videos that showed how to take it apart. And I had this thing very much apart. I had a lot of things off here. So we want this screw here taken out. They've got a reddish tinge, the ones that hold the unit to the front face. And then you'll see one right about here. Now the others you don't want to mess with. You see, red tinge. Now it's still not ready. So this is where your special tool comes in play. And you will have to have something like this. You can't get around it. And on your volume and on the balance, you've got a nut in there that's locked up against the front face. Now 
think that's it. Oh, there it is. You can see it hanging there. There will be three of these that you'll have to have hold of to get your clock back together. So there's the balance. We'll take that one off. And then at the top there is a selector. Um, that has to come off as well. Now we're ready to pull this thing out. When I had put this in the last time, I put the speaker wire along the top, and I see now I shouldn't have done that. It's stopping me from getting it out. It should go on the bottom anyway, underneath this whole mess. So once I get that off and I clear, clear that speaker wire, I'm going to be able to pull this unit free. Now we could take the speakers out, or we could disconnect the speakers whatever it made it easier for you to work on as far as cleaning the cabinet and such so we'll take that front piece off so we can get a look at it here in a second now this clock here i had to do a lot of work on the uh, clock mechanism itself i got uh went ahead i'm going to go ahead and straighten this out you can tell that's bent a little bit i don't know how that happened but the clock mechanism itself i had to replace i got a comparable clock believe it or not but the digits were different, so I actually took the digits off of that clock and put them onto this one. Let's go ahead and get this front piece off. There's just those five screws, like we said. Now we've got this turned up, and you can see this capacitor here. There's a lot of capacitors, but that's a pretty sizable one. I'm going to go ahead and replace that one before I get it back together. The rest I'll have to do later. Like I said, this thing has taken a lot of my time, and it's mostly because of the the mechanism, the flip clock mechanism. And you can see working around here, you've got this tuner string. If you're going to do some soldering, that's going to get in your way. Now, like I said, the mechanism here, I had replaced the digits. That, that was because I wanted the digits to be the, the same as the original clock. And I thought I was doing great to have a mechanism. But then I found out that the mechanism had shorter rods here. This is the sleep set, and this is the time and alarm set. So I had to actually go in and replace these. So it became, it became a really, really a pain after a while, but I wasn't going to give up, and I finally did get it all back together. Now the front piece we've got removed, obviously, and we need to do that so we can get it clean. And when you find these, again, being vintage clocks, they're going to be filthy and they'll have a haze on the back of them. Now, the clear space there where the radio appears through and the clock appears through, that has been kind of welded on there with a, some kind of heat iron there. Someone, some rascal welded them down instead of gluing them. So you're going to have to take a Dremel or something to get those off or... You can just clean behind there. There's actually enough space to where you can run a rag, soapy rag through there and get that get that clean without taking that off. Now, this is what I've been using lately a lot. Some kind of lens wipes is would be a good thing to have in your toolkit. Now, you think, well, alcohol wipes, why not that? Well, alcohol can really mess up your wood finishes. And this is designed not to scratch. So if you use it properly. You would take it and wipe first to try to get any of the residue off and then go back, flip it over, and then clean it again. I like to use soap and water on a lot of things, but this is a good second. Well, there it is, the Panasonic LTD RE8345 Flip Clock Boom Box. It's been a struggle, but I think it's worth it. Thanks for taking the time.